Hi friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. And we've got the G-Frame from Real Steel Knives. It's a uh, frame lock version of a slip joint knife that was originally uh, out. It was designed by Ostap Hell, my favorite knife designer. And what we've got is a very nice sort of gentleman's folder. We've got a wire clip that's right and left. It's got a flipper. We've got a nice fuller. It's a really nice knife. Titanium, sort of that bead blasted titanium finish, and then a satin finish of uh, S35VN stainless steel. So if you're looking for a knife like this, it's only at White Mountain Knives. You can save 10% with coupon code CCE. That brings a knife that is originally $109.99 all the way down to $98.99. So basically 99 US dollars for this knife. Make sure you use coupon code CCE to get that discount. And that code works for anything at the store. So I'm really liking this knife. Let's go over to the tabletop and take a good close look at it. I don't usually review knives in this price range, but I just couldn't resist, you know, because hey, the flip joint a uh, slip joint version of this knife was really, really nice. So I just had to have it. All right, there it is. Here's the G slip version. I put it in this uh, slip case from uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works. It's like $3, three or $4 US for that. And here is the olive version. I originally had a G10 version of this knife. It doesn't have a pocket clip, which is why I got this thing. VG10 steel. You can still get these, and now you can get the olive one directly from White Mountain Knives. You don't have to try to get it from Germany like me. It is, uh, what is it, $68 before discount. And they've got a yellow G10 version with black blade for $59.60. And then they get the original black and satin finish for $54.80. I'll put a link down below to White Mountain Knives for the slip joint versions and, of course, the G-frame version. And I'm just very, very fond of this knife. Let's do a size comparison with the Ontario Rat 1 that in there. It is a smaller knife, clearly. A little bit shorter in, you know, pretty much every dimension, except for the cutting edge length is almost identical the same on these two knives. So let's take a close-up look at this thing. We've got a long blade that doesn't have a lot of depth to it. Full flat grind all the way through the fuller, all the way to the spine. The fuller pokes out the end. Ostapel design is on the bevel there. Nice and small, like I like it. And here it says S35VN. And then right here, 069. 69. I grew up on 69 Maple Street. I was born in 1969. It's uh, from the time I was an innocent little kid. I like that number. So that's why I asked for it. On this side, it says real steel. Quite like it. We've got a bit of a drop point here. Good belly, long straight section. Pretty thin behind the grind, which is what I like. We've got jimping up here with a space between it. That looks kind of odd, but it works really well. We've got nice ball bearings in there. Really good, smooth action. I just enjoy it a lot. The flipper has got jimping on the front of it. It's really easy to actuate. It's just perfect. The detent on it is very, very good indeed. Lockup point is exactly where I like it to be on a brand new knife, so that's very good. Of course, there is a lock bar insert with an over travel stop tab built in right there, so you can't push it out too far. Very well done. We've got the wire clip right and left. So there's a space here. Oh, I didn't talk about this. The space to get your thumb in here to the lock release. 
because it is almost flush. There's just a little step down right there, but it's very easy to get your thumb in there to disengage that lock. So no problem at all. And left-handed works just fine as well. So I really like that. I have had the wire move side to side a bit. And so you can see that there are some uh, polishing lines on the uh, handle right here. That's because I carry my knives for quite a while doing my testing. So we've got that. And I got a nice trail. I rubbed this handle on something. We've got a pin here for the lanyard, which is quite nice. Quite like how that's done. Otherwise, it's just these two bolts that hold it together, you know, just like on this one. There's a bolt at the end and then a bolt at the pivot. Watch this. You can use it as a front flipper. <laughs> it's If they would have made that come out just a tiny bit further, it'd be a really good front flipper. I, I sometimes get it like I got it that time and now I'm trying to get it again and I'm not getting it again. I guess I'm trying too hard now. There we go. So for people who've got skills, this jimping up here that I talked about before, you can use it as a front flipper. Other than that, you know, when you're holding it, you can reach out and get your thumb in there. Well, that was, that's not doing very well. I had a really bad hangnail in there. And so it looks like it might be infected. I don't know why I mentioned that. <laughs> it's a good knife for cutting. Nice and thin, cuts well, slices well, pierces well. It's got a nice sharpness choil. It's just a very high functioning knife. You wanna see how well the pocket clip works? It just does. It just climbs over and works. And you don't have a lot of knife sticking out. I'm a big fan of wire pocket clips, even if, you know, they can get a little side to side wiggly. Oh, that one's moving right there. I noticed that this could move back and forth. And when I paid closer attention to it, uh, this wire on this side, well, it's the same wire, but the wire on this side, if you look down in there, it wiggles. This side's holding tight. But that side wiggles. Uh, maybe I should switch to my other uh, lens. There you go. Now you can see it. So what I tried to do is I put my screwdriver in there, the right size. I first tried it on this side and it just slipped a little bit. So I stopped, put it down, went back to my set of tools and went and grabbed this stuff. This is drive grip. I haven't talked about it in a video for a long time. If you're new to my channel, uh, you might not know about this stuff. This stuff is awesome. It's an anti cam out fluid. You stick it between a screwdriver and a screw, uh, like it shows in that image there. You just drip it on either one of those two or both of them. And then you still try to go as well as you can, put nice pressure on it but it creates a lot of extra grip in there. But this screw, screw is just stripped out. There's one little spot where it feels like it catches a little bit, but it doesn't catch enough to move it. Uh, maybe they use Loctite in it. And so I could not tighten it up. And <laughs> I can't loosen it up either. It's stripped out, so I can't adjust this thing. There's nothing I can do about that. I made a video about this stuff. I'll link it down below. I'll put the link up here in the corner as well. And I'll put the link at the very end of the video. This stuff and uh, this company Vibratite also has a thread locker. They call it ThreadMate. Uh, the name of it is VC3. That stuff is the best stuff to hold screws for knives. It's not like Loctite brand. It's not, it doesn't function the same way. Watch the video about it, that stuff is awesome. That's the only stuff I use on my knives these days is VC3 instead of any thread locker. So back to this thing, there's nothing I could do. It's just sliding around. Hopefully I can take it apart. 
Okay, here we've got the tear down. You can see the lock bar insert in there. Well done. You can see a trench here for a captured stop pin to travel in, but there's none on this side. The uh, stop pin is just one-sided on the blade. I don't really have a problem with that. This blade is very light. Doesn't really need a huge stop pin. You can see these washers, those are races. They go onto the titanium, so the ball bearings run on those because uh, titanium is quite soft actually compared to steel. And you need hard steel, especially with hard ceramic running on it. We've got 10 little ceramic ball bearings on there. Uh, that's harder than steel, so certainly harder than titanium. So you need nice hardened races for those to run on. Quite good. Decent construction. You know, here's that little hourglass shaped lanyard pin that goes in the back there. Again, it comes back down to T6 looks pretty because it's nice and small, but I hate T6 screws. Knife makers, please. T8 should be the smallest screw you use on a knife. A lot of knife companies are putting T8s all over the place. I wish all knife companies would use T8 all the time. It just, it's important because, yeah, this knife, I can't use it, you know, the way it's designed to use it. You know, why not just fill that in? So, but no. I'm quite unhappy about that, actually. At first glance, it looks like it's a free-spinning pivot pin all round and everything. But it's not. There's a very tiny little flat section right there. You can see there's a flat section on the bottom right there. So it's not free-spinning at all. So very simple construction. Let's put her back together and go over all the sizes and dimensions. That's why I do teardowns. I don't usually show the teardown because that makes the video really long, but I do the teardown. And if I wouldn't have done a teardown, I wouldn't have found that issue with that uh, screw right there being stripped out from the factory. I just did not expect it. Maybe the screw wasn't hardened properly or something. I don't know. I also forgot to mention before, the balance point on this knife is right about there. So if they would have skeletonized or milled out the inside of the titanium a little bit, they could have brought it closer. I like the pivot point or the balance point to be right where your index finger goes. And I forgot to show you blade alignment. It's pretty close to perfect. Like it's a very good blade alignment from the factory. And now that I've taken it apart and cleaned it and oiled it, the action's even nicer. Like that's just nice. And since I'm talking about products, uh, this is what I use. Yeah, I'm a budget knife guy. I use inexpensive stuff. This is excellent oil for knives. Uh, made by Lucas. It's synthetic. It's got extra hydrophobic elements in it, even more than oil. So it's great for outdoor knives that might get out in the rain and stuff. Now for all the sizes and dimensions. The weight of this knife, 74 grams. 2.6 ounces. Very light indeed. It is a gentleman's style knife. Sharpness from the factory, 85 bess. That's very good. That's sharper than average by a, a pretty good margin. Cutting edge length, 84.2 millimeters, 3.315 inches. Blade length, tip to the closest spot on the titanium, 86.8 millimeters, 3.418 inches. The thickness of the blade up here at the flat Ricasso, 2.41 millimeters, 95 thousandths of an inch. So almost a tenth of an inch thick. The blade depth, it's widest here by the heel of the blade, 19.27 millimeters, 0.758 of an inch. How thin is it behind the grind? Very nice. 0.45 millimeters, 17 and a half thousandths of an inch. Very well done. The sharpening is very well done as well. Uh, this side, the average is 18.7. This side, the average is 19.6. It starts at 19.1, ends at 20.4, so that's 1.3 degrees variation. Not too bad. 
This side starts at 18.3, ends at 19.0, so that's 0.7 degrees variation. So that's sharpened quite a bit better than average, but uh, you know, it's not perfect, but it's done quite well. The handle now, 111 millimeters, 4.37 inches. The grip area, it's a little over nine centimeters, a little over three and a half inches. The handle thickness, 9.9 .9 millimeters, that's 0.39 of an inch. The handle depth, the widest point within the grip is right in the middle here because it does swell up just a little bit on the spine. 20.37 millimeters, 0 0.802 of an inch. When the knife is closed, the widest point is, of course, at the flipper. 24.5 millimeters, 0 0.965 of an inch. And the total length of this knife from end to end, 198 millimeters, 7.79 inches. So the proportions are quite good. The balance is quite good. All that stuff, I really, really like all that stuff. To summarize, what are my thoughts and feelings? Well, my thoughts about this knife were generally very, very positive. Um, it's a numbered knife. That's kind of a nice touch. I like that. Good action. Solid lockup. Easy to use lock release. The flipper's nice. It's a light blade. It's a well-ground blade. I like that fuller in there. The jimping on the spine is really nice. Uh, I don't use lanyards much, but I tested that lanyard pin. That's just fine. Wire clip. I like that. Titanium finish. I tend not to like titanium because I tend to get all these little scratch lines on it. Maybe I'm just not careful enough. That could be on me and not really on the material. Uh, sharpness choil. I haven't talked about that very much. It's a very nice sharpness choil. It, the way it's designed, things don't really get caught in there all that easy. If stuff gets in there, you know, while you're cutting, it tends to come out. But yeah, well made. You can sharpen right to the end without getting into the plunge. Really nice. The sharpening's done. The blade's nice and thin. Sharpening's done well, I, I mean. And the fuller is kind of cool. I like that. The, this design is really, really nice. The cons. Well, titanium shows wear easily. I'm not that fond of it. And so I am wondering, maybe if there was a stonewash finish on titanium, be a little better. I'm not sure. And the other con, T6 screws. Oh, T6 screws. Yeah, they look nice, but they're not nice. This one here had been stripped out at the factory, and so it just, I can feel it rubbing a little bit, like it's click, 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 but it's smoothed out too much. It just spins. So T6 can be, you know, decent, but... It's just not worth the risk, in my opinion. It's it's always wise to get a good T8. I mean, make it with T8 is what I should say. It's really unfortunate. I still like the knife. I'm keeping the knife. It's my knife. It's a fun knife. I enjoy it. Cuts well. Feels good in the hand. I didn't talk about the hand feel before. It feels good in the hand. It's, you know, like I said, very light. 2.6 ounces for... A full size for a full size knife that's not bad at all thank you so much for watching my channel thanks to my patreon supporters and my youtube member supporters you guys are awesome the giveaway will be done very soon thanks everyone for liking sharing commenting and subscribing and remember cut towards your chum not your thumb bye for now